one does not simply walk into Mordor. The Land of Shadow. Hey, welcome everyone to the Land of Shadow. In today's Shadow Cast, we're going to be focusing on Minas Morgul. Uh, that lay within a fold of the Mountains of Shadow along its western side. Um, we're going to be focusing in this lore video on the city of Minas Ithil, the Tower of the Moon, and, it, and we'll watch and discuss its descent into horror where it was ever after known as Minas Morgul, the Tower of Sorcery. The Dark Citadel the Nazgul. Uh, next week, I'm planning to bring you part two of the Rings of Power uh, season one review. But until then, let's go ahead and cross over the pale bridge as we enter the shadow of the Morgul Vale. The watch upon the walls of Mordor slept, and dark things crept back into Gorgoroth. And on a time evil things came forth, and they took Minas Ithil, and abode in it, and they made it into a place of dread. And it is called Minas Morgul, the Tower of Dark Sorcery. The history of this city begins in the Second Age, after the fall of Numenor. In 3319, Elendil and the remaining faithful came to the shores of Middle-earth and founded the kingdom of Gondor. His two sons, Isildur and Anarion, built twin cities on either side of Asgiliath, the heart of Gondor. Minas Ithil was raised by Isildur near the mountainous border of Mordor from where he would rule the fief of Athelion, while Anarion built Minas Arnor to rule over the fief of Anorion. Each of the cities housed its own palantir, and in the north of Middle-earth, Elendil founded the kingdom of Arnor, west of the Misty Mountains. When Sauron returned to Middle-earth, after escaping the destruction of Numenor, he launched an assault upon God and his forces overwhelmed Minas Ithil. However, he was unable to take Asgiliath or Minas Arnor. When the last alliance of men and elves defeated Sauron at the close of the Second Age, in 3429, Minas Ithil was restored as a watchtower over Mordor. For the first thousand years of the Third Age, Sauron slept. The One Ring remained lost, and Gondor and Arnor grew in power. In the first years of the second millennium of the Third Age, a shadow fell on the Greenwood, and men began to call it Mirkwood. The wise perceived that a great darkness lurked in Dol Gadur, and it was thought to be one of the Nazgul. Evil things began to multiply orcs, and trolls, and wargs. The lord of the Nazgul invaded the north, calling himself the Witch King of Angmar, and began a long campaign against Arnor. Gondor was weakened by the kinstrife and war from the east and the south. Much of western Middle-earth suffered a great plague and was made desolate. The North Kingdom fell at last when the Witch King assaulted Fornost, but he in turn was also defeated. In his ruin, he fled back to Mordor in 1980, 
summoning the Nazgul to prepare the way for their master's return. They laid siege to Minas Ithil, and after two years of terrible battle, they managed to take the city. The Ithil Stone was captured and carried into Mordor. Fell creatures occupied Minas Ithil, and it became known as Minas Morgul, the Dark Tower of Sorcery. Most Gondorians fled to Minas Arnor, which was renamed Minas Tirith, Tower of the Guard. The last king of Gondor was twice challenged by the lord of the Nazgul. King Anur rode forth with his knights against Morgul, and was never seen again in Middle-earth, thus ending the line of kings in Gondor. A time known as the Watchful Peace began, lasting for nearly 400 years. The time of peace ended as Mordor once more renewed its attacks on Gondor. The White Council was formed to deal with the growing threat in Dol Guldur, and they drove Sauron out of southern Mirkwood. In Mordor, a new breed of orcs emerged, the Black Uruks, who were large soldier orcs that assailed and overran Lithium. Osgiliath was destroyed. In secret, the Dark Lord returned to Mordor and began the rebuilding of Barad-dûr and the fortification of the Black Gate. Sauron openly declared himself, and Mount Doom burst into renewed flame. The Lord of the Nazgul ruled over the city of Minas Morgul, making his final preparations for the last assault upon Gondor. A great road was built from the Morgul Vale to the plain of Gorgoroth, cutting through a natural pass in the Mountains of Shadow, so that vast armies could pass from Mordor into the west. Minas Ithil was once a place of great beauty, the courtyards filled with gardens, and streets made of white marble reflected the silver light from the moon. A large tower dominated the center of the city, with a rotating watchtower upon its pinnacle. It sat upon a hill at the far end of the vale, with meadows upon either side through which a mountain stream ran. It was a city of men fair to behold. Now it was named Minas Morgul, and its beauty was replaced by a creeping horror, a sickly, corpse-pale light that illuminated nothing in this valley of terror. Imlad Morgul, the stream that ran through the unwholesome vale, was cold, and a vapor rose from it, giving forth a carnal smell. An odor of rottenness filled the air. Across the shadowy meads there ran a white bridge, pale and luminous, and a road that wound deviously up to the city's iron gate. Guarding the entrance to the bridge were two figures, cunningly shaped in forms both human and bestial. The white marble tower in the center of the city, once fair and radiant, now glowed with a terrible sheen. Its black windows watched with sleepless eyes. Upon its crown sat the dark turret, always turning this way and that, leering into the darkness. For this was the Morgul Vale, the city of the ringwraiths in the land of shadow. Little is known about what lay within its pale walls, for those who were captured and taken to the Witch King's lair never returned. However, we do know that from Minas Morgul came much of the dark sorcery of Mordor. The Morgul blades, whose knife point would splinter and drive into the flesh, making slaves of its victims. The pale blade carried by the Witch King dripped with fire and was used to force the gate of Minas Tirith. Morgul spells of breaking were etched upon the iron hide of Grand, 
and evil darts of the enemy were used in battle to subdue and kill the men of the West. The origin of this dark sorcery came from the city of the Ringwraiths. After the overthrow of Sauron and the final fall of the remaining Nazgul into the fiery ruin of Mount Doom, King Elisar declared that Minas Morgul should be utterly destroyed and that no man might live in that terrible veil until it was completely washed clean. So ended the dark power of the Nazgul in Middle-earth. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this lore video uh, about Minas Morgul. In our next shadow cast, of course, I'll be bringing you part two of the Rings of Power uh, season one review. Also, I wanna make sure you guys stop by our website, www.thelandofshadow.com and check out our Dark Domains of Mordor. So until next time, I hope to see you upon the battlements of the Black Gate into the Land of Shadow.